Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.dev. And uh, recently I, I, you know, I've oftentimes used this Open Weather Map API uh, to do requests based on city. So basically say, hey, you know, what's the weather in New York City or what's the weather in uh, Vancouver or something like that. Recently this uh, API changed and now requires that generally you need to use like latitude, longitude. So like now what happens, you have to do multiple API calls. So I figured this would be a good time to talk about how to make nested API calls. Um, you know, when you have to make one API call after another to kind of get the data that you need. So essentially what happens here, first let's just kind of talk about the API. Uh, so if I go to the API section here, here's like all the different APIs for API weather map. I have API keys, which I'll go fetch in a second. But basically if I go to the current weather data, because that's what I want to do is I want to display the current weather data, and I read the API documentation, Okay, once upon a time, there was an option here for me to like do it by city. It's no longer here. Now they mention that right here in the documentation and that there's a separate API built into this called the GeoCoder API, which will actually take the city and convert it to longitude. longitude, longitude. So in that way, so in that case, to kind of keep the whole city thing going, what we need to do is first call this API, which it has this endpoint. Okay, so let's actually like, let's get that out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up VS Code. Okay, and I'm going to just be using plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I'm just going to call, we'll call this weather.html. Okay. And then I will open this in live server. So that way it's just this kind of open there. Okay, and all I'm going to do is just do standard HTML page. Okay, I'm just going to move that out of the way give myself some more space here and I'm just gonna use a script tag I'm not gonna do anything too fancy so use a script tag instead of setting up a whole separate JavaScript file um, now what I am gonna do is I know a lot of people you might be using jQuery so you might be using the Ajax function that's built in the jQuery you may be using Axios um, to do your API calls which is a little, a slightly different than using fetch that's built into JavaScript because it's like an extra step so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna create a function that kind of cuts out that extra step so that way it looks more like if you were using Ajax or Axios. So I will just kind of create that function real quick. We'll call it like get JSON because I'm getting JSON data. It's gonna take a URL and essentially it'll just fetch that URL. And actually, what I want to do is I want to return the result. So I want to return the result of the fetch. Then dot then, and then we'll take that response from that. Turn that into JSON data and then return that promise because that'll be sort of the promise that I want. Okay, so that'll that'll essentially work the way like the Ajax function in jQuery works or Axios from Axios. It essentially skip that middle step for me. Okay, so here we go. So essentially, let's just first see if we can make the initial call. So we'll say get JSON and what I need to do is pass the URL. Okay, so we'll just kind of construct the, we'll just hard code the URL. So first thing I want to do is I'm just going to copy the sample URL from the documentation. Okay, but well you see here, there's a bunch of variables that I need to have in it. Okay. So, um, I'm going to start filling in those variables. So we're going to say like New York. So new percentage 20. Oh, actually we'll just say new York. It should automatically figure out the space thing. New York, New York, the country code should be US, okay, let's see if it gives us any information on how to figure out what to make sure that I'm getting those right, you, well, here we go, uh, country US, okay, so country's like, yeah, that's fine, limit, um, uh, does it give us an example of what I want to place the limit, limit, limit number of locations in the API response up to five so we'll just say one um, API key then I have to go get my API key from here so what I'm going to do is actually open this up again in another tab and sure you can know why it why not okay go to I think I want to go through here and I want to take a look at my API keys Okay, I'm going to create a new API key. That one's inactive, so pretty. Um, so we'll call this temp. 
because I'm going to delete it right after we're done with this video. Okay, so now I have an active API key. So I'll copy that API key. And I will put it right over here. Okay. Oh, because there's a line break, I need to fix that. There we go. Okay, so there is my string. Okay, so you see, like, I take a look at the API. I can see, like, it says, hey, these are the things I need to fill in in the URL in order to get my result. And, you know, before I even do that, let me actually test, like, make sure, hey, this is this URL working. So if I go over here in the browser, do my first test. Okay, I see I get invalid API key. So I'm going to assume that the API key probably needs a minute to become active. Okay, because technically that is the API key it matches. So I'm going to pause this recording and give it a few minutes to, like, become active. Okay, I think I've given it enough time, so let's try it out. And it is working now. Yay. Okay, so basically now I am getting the data and see, like, it took New York City and was able to turn it into latitude and longitude for me. So we now know that, hey, like, the URL works. Okay, that's always generally the first thing you want to do with an API, make sure that I can see the data uh, before I do it in my code, because that way there's just less layers of things that could be the problem. The URL could be the problem. Your code could be the problem. Here I know the URL is fine. Okay, so I've established that. Again, it's all about keeping the universe of possible problems as little as possible. Okay, so now that I know that this is going to work, I can continue on. So again, get JSON. This function that I created should just return this promise, just kind of like the way like the Ajax function jQuery works or Axios works. And then I can just use dot then. And I'm going to receive the, we'll just call it the lo you know, location data. That's essentially what it is. Okay, now let's just console.log it to make sure that I'm actually getting the data. Okay. So now let's see here. Let's go back over here. I will open up DevTools, go to my console, and let me refresh the page. Yep, there it is. Okay. So you see here, I'm getting the object. And see, notice, like, if I take a look at right here very carefully, what am I getting? I'm actually getting an array with an object in it. So if I go back and take a look, see there's that little square bracket for an array. You've got to be really careful what is the kind of data you're working with. Okay. So really, the data that I want is in this array. It's in the first object in the array. And then in that object, there's a property called by among. Okay, so that's, that's, because notice, like, there's another object right here, local names. And that's the great thing about having a good extension for looking at JSON. It makes it much easier to organize it, because, see, I can collapse this, like, mini object that's in the middle there to make it see it more clearly. So I can see, hey, look, there's these properties inside the object that's inside the array. Okay, so now with that, I can, what I would do is I would practice console logging the property until I, I find the property that I want. So I kind of want location dot, well it's not dot because it's an array, so it would be location zero dot lat. Okay, that's dot lat. So let me just take a look at that, see if that gives me what I want. Yep, and that gives me what I want. Okay, so let me just save the lat and the longitude into a variable, cons lat equals location zero dot lat and let me just save the longitude into a variable i think that's what long let me just take a look at the example object here it is lon the property name okay so now i got these two things saved in a variable wonderful so see this makes the first api call so that way i can get the latitude longitude Okay, and again, the purpose of this video is to show you like what happens when you need to make multiple API calls. Well, technically, this data only exists inside this dot then. So that means the second API call has to be inside that dot then. Why? Because that's where the data exists. So then the next step would be to do, you know, what I'll do is I will then construct my URL. So I'll say URL equals, and I'm going to use backticks because backticks allows me to use string interpolation. So again, I will copy the sample URL from the current weather API, okay, and I will do that. So I need to inject my API key, which, you know, I could clean up the code and save my API key in a variable. So I can just do that, say control C, say const key equals, there we go. 
So now, in any, anywhere I see these curly brackets, I need to inject my variables. So I'll be like lat. And actually, I named them the same thing, so I could literally just put the dollar sign there. And then here I would just change this to API well, key. Okay, and then I'm going to, basically what's going to happen here is I'm injecting the result of this here, the result of this there, because see, because I'm saying the latitude equals the latitude, the longitude equals the longitude, and my API ID, which is the API key, is this. Okay, so I got that URL, so now I can do the next API call, get using my getJSON function that I made. Okay, and basically um, pass in the URL. And then again, I should do a dot then. And let's just double check that I'm getting the data. So this time I should be getting the weather data. So we'll say weather console.log weather. And let's just see if that's what I'm getting. Um, let me refresh the page. Mm, lawn is not defined. Okay, so I'm getting this error here. Lawn is not defined. This is a reference error. This is on line 22. Oh, because I called it long. See, the name of the variable is long. So, there we go. Okay, and see, we get the weather object. So, see, now I am getting the weather object. So, now I have that data. So, you see, like, sometimes, there's going to be a lot of times where APIs require you to make a call to one API, then another one, then another one, then another one, uh, to get lots of pieces of data. All it is is really you're just nesting each API call in order. So, I make the first API call. So I get the data, and that data is available inside the dot then for that API call. And then I would make the next API call inside of that dot then, and then again, it's just another dot then. This does get icky once in a while. So this is where like extra fancy like features like um, like uh, a sync await can be really useful. But that's a story for another day. So you can watch my videos on a sync await on how you can kind of clean this up with like a sync await. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Or at least make it look a little cleaner. But at the end of the day, like this is how that would work. Okay. Um, yeah. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that and found that clarifying on how to do uh, nested API calls. Have a great day and enjoy.